Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. My name is Kenny and I'm here every week to talk about movies. Or in this case, a movie poster. I actually spent a long time considering between the T1 and T2 poster. Guess which one I picked. But seriously, it was a hard decision. Both movies mean a lot to me. I ultimately picked the original because, if I'm really honest with myself, I like the first one a lot better. And if the later sequels actually used more from the original for inspiration, rather than just relying on T2, the Terminator franchise would be in a much better place today. You want to know something funny? I actually never even liked the first Terminator when I watched it as a kid. When T2 first came out, the previews and toys, they were all over the place. It's all anybody was ever talking about. I just wanted to watch this movie so bad, but I had never seen the original. So my mom did the most logical thing. She went out and rented the first one for me to watch first. By the way, when I say my mom did the most logical thing, what I mean is the most logical thing back in the early 90s, before parents were so obsessed with the rating system. Nowadays, parents wouldn't let their kids touch a rated R movie with a 10-foot pole. But back then, kids were raised on rated R movies. If you don't believe me, just take a look at all the Terminator and Robocop and Alien toys from back in the day. These are the movies that raised kids back then. Anyway, my mom rented me the original Terminator, but the whole time I kept thinking, why is the Terminator the bad guy? Where's that liquid metal man? I actually kept waiting for Kyle Reese to shapeshift into something else. I was so disappointed. Well, over the time, my opinion has obviously changed, and the original Terminator now holds a spot in my heart as one of my all-time favorite movies. On the surface, I mean, it's just about a cyborg sent back in time to kill some woman. But if you bother to dig a little deeper, you'll find it actually tells a very human story. It tells the story of Sarah Connor, a very innocent, naive young woman who's so vulnerable that she pretty much just becomes the helpless victim right away. I mean, she can't even fight hard enough to get away from Kyle Reese. Now we know, of course, that Kyle Reese was sent back to save her, but she didn't know that. She was confused and scared. She wanted to escape, but she couldn't. Just like how she couldn't escape from the police station during the shootout. She was pretty much paralyzed by fear, kind of hiding under the table as if she was a child. And it wasn't until Reese got there that she was even able to run away. But as the movie goes on, we get to see her grow. She starts to believe in herself, and she truly realizes her value to the future. She falls in love, and by the end, she finds enough courage to stand up to the Terminator, all by herself. Ultimately, this is not some time-traveling sci-fi story about cyborgs with a little bit of Sarah Connor on the side. No, this is a very human story about Sarah Connor with a little bit of time travel and cyborgs on the side. And let's not forget that the whole movie is filmed as if it's a horror movie. So we've got a movie that tells a very human story inside of a sci-fi action told as if it's a horror. The original Terminator is such a clever movie. I mean, it has so many different elements. It makes it such a unique movie experience. And if the later sequels used more from the original as inspiration rather than just T2, the Terminator would be a much better franchise today. Now, I don't mean to take anything away from T2. T2 is still one of my all-time favorites, and nobody can change my mind about that. When I first saw it, especially after my experience watching the original. It was love at first viewing. It met and exceeded all of my expectations, and it's still one of the greatest action movies of all time. It cleaned up a lot of the grit and grease from the original. It still kept the human element. We saw some growth from John Connor. Uh, we even saw some more growth from Sarah Connor. But a lot of the horror, like the brutality and viciousness from the original, it was cleaned up, and we were left with a much more like higher polished action movie. Now, that's not a bad thing. For T2, it worked. My problem is that every one of the later sequels forgot completely about the original, and they only used T2 for inspiration. They tried making the high-polished action even more high-polished. We started to get less and less character-driven stories, and more focus went to making more refined, like, larger action sequences. T2 had a chase scene in a canal, which, by the way, is one of my all-time favorite action sequences. So T3 was like, let's do something totally original. We'll have our chase scene on a crowded street. Then Genesis was like, oh, I'll see your crowded street and I'll throw in the Golden Gate Bridge. And by the time we got to Dark Fate, they were like, well, let's just have a scene where a big truck flips over on a highway because every Terminator movie has a scene where a big truck turns over on a highway. I mean, all of these action sequences just start to blur together and I can barely tell them apart. The only one that remotely stands out is Salvation. Yes, it was still more action, less horror, and yes, they still cut down a lot of the characters and 
human aspect from the story, but it did something different. It's less polished with more grit and it actually takes place in the future. Salvation isn't great, but at least it's good. Of all the later sequels, it holds up the best and it's the most watchable. This is because it wasn't trying to be a carbon copy of T2. If only more of the later sequels had the balls to do something like this, I'd be a much happier Terminator fan. One more thing before I get off my high horse. Of all the sequels, you know which one hurt the most? Dark Fate. Of all the sequels to bring the Terminator back to its more horrific roots, I really thought this one would be it. James Cameron had finally gotten his rights back to the franchise. He was the producer. He even helped write the damn thing. I was so sure we were going to get a Terminator that was dark and dirty. Boy, was I wrong. Maybe after a few years, once the dust kind of settles, we can get a new Terminator that is a little closer to the original. It doesn't even have to have Arnold. In fact, at his age, it probably shouldn't have Arnold. James Cameron's original idea for the Terminator was for it to actually look like a regular person who can kind of disappear into a crowd. No reason we couldn't get something like that instead. Well, let me know in the comments down below if you'd like to see a more graphic Terminator sequel. Or let me know if you like the direction the franchise has gone. Or maybe you think enough is enough and let's just pull the plug on a franchise and let it die in peace. Well, if you actually stuck around to the end of this video, thank you for watching. Make sure you subscribe, that way you can stay up to date on what I'm watching. As well as stay up to date on my new decor. And until next time, let's not just watch movies, let's talk about them too.